Hello and welcome everyone to my Let's Play Tomb Raider. This is Algaris 115. Now, if you remember, we finished the last level, well, the previous level, Sister, by jumping into a sewer once again. And this is basically where the next level begins, pretty much. Now, um, you can think of this level as basically just an extension of the system because even though it's called Tomb of Tihokan, uh, the actual tomb is going to be accessible at the very end of the level. Before that, it's basically just another sewage, sewage system. Now, this brings me to what I tried to explain a few levels ago. These switches can only be used on the on solid ground, whereas the one we're going to use right now can only be used underwater. So, it's pretty easy to guess what's going to happen next. And yeah, we've basically just changed the water level for the area. And we can uh, use this switch now that we're on the solid ground. Which actually reminds me. The way the game engine works when changing the water levels is that it basically adjusts the water level for the whole level. Now, the developers probably had to count on this. And as you can see, we lowered the water level even at the beginning area. So basically, once you lower or raise the water level, it applies to the whole level. So if they intend to have areas untouched by this change of water altitude, they're going to have to put them much higher. Which was pretty much the case in System. So that's just a bit of a trivia for the beginning. Now, be careful as there's going to be a crocodile around the corner here. And he's down. Yay, we did not take a damage. Now, this block over here, it looks kind of odd, doesn't it? And no, you can't move it. What's really unique about it is, even though it's made of stone, we're gonna make it flow by raising the water level once again. And as I mentioned before, it actually raises the water level in all areas of the level. This one included. Now... Be careful as, um, yeah, we're gonna have to reach the ledge over there. However, what I prefer to do is walk to the very right side and climb in this corner of this stone pillar purely because there are two poison darts traps. Well, I keep calling them poison darts, they're just darts, really. And yeah, you're basically safe in four corners of this stone pillar, but not in any of the, uh, yeah, just think about it like a D pad on some uh, console or. Game Boy or whatever. And uh, yeah, so that's a way, nice way to dodge these darts. Now, um, yeah, as I said, we're gonna raise the water level, and um, by doing this, we'll actually make the stone block float somehow. Not sure what it's made of, but apparently it's some magical stuff that makes things moving. Now there it is, it's all the way up there. However, keep in mind that it actually reveals this small passage with a small health pack. It doesn't count as a secret, but just thought I pointed out. Now, um, this level is actually incredibly frustrating. It's short, but it is some of the most annoying passages of the game. You'll soon understand what I mean, and Pierre is going to be a real son of a bitch in this one as well. Now, so yeah, basically, everything you hated about Cistern is just concentrated in the very beginning of Tomb of Tihokan level. It's very annoying. But once you get through it, you'll be rewarded with a very interesting passage in the end, so that's kind of cool. Now watch out, there's a bloodthirsty rat over here, which will get the jump on you. And no, we don't want to waste a shotgun. Damn it. Let's just keep jumping. Oh, it bit us. Twice as well, god damn it. And anyway, um, this is gonna be a tall area that we're gonna re keep revisiting for a while now. What you can do is move this block over there in order, in order to be able to reach that ledge. However, what I prefer to do is just jump on top of the block and make a running jump from here. And you don't have to bother moving it. It's very handy, actually. Uh, speeds things up a little. You know, I don't understand why there are these ram head decorations all over the place. Huh. At any rate, um, 
Now you can see uh, two passages, one on our left and one on our right. We should first visit the one on our right, however this is purely optional in case you want a few pickups and a secret. If you can't be bothered with it, then um, you can just skip to the left one. However, uh, we want to get all the secrets and pickups, so we're going to go to the left first. And we're going to have a Lara's Admirer. Yeah, there he is. And he's gone, just like that. I really don't know how he does that, but I'm really happy I don't have to see his face ever again. Now watch out. We've been through these. Hell, even worse. However, what makes this a bit awkward is the fact that there is a step. So it kind of makes it a bit harder to judge your actual distance, but... Going down shouldn't be hard, but going back up is going to be a bit harder. And... yeah. I think you can hear him, there's a crocodile over here. Okay, I'm sort of wasting my shotgun shots, to be honest, but... Oh dear. Okay, but look, we're just going to have two packages right over here. I really don't mind wasting ammunition, as long as it's fun. I mean, you don't need it in order to finish the game, to be honest. It just makes it much more fun. Now, this is basically an area with the first secret, which is easily missable. Because this area is going to be flooded by war. Yes, that same old deal again. However, once you flood flooded with war, you won't be able to, um, to access the secret that's behind this panel over here. It blends in with the rest of the textures. So, you might notice uh, three odd-looking squares. Now, you just need to step on those, all three of them, and it uh, doesn't really matter in which order you do it, or how much time you're going to spend standing on top of one, or what area of each you're going to cover. Just basically trigger them like any touchpad, and you're going to be presented with a short sliding challenge and rewarded with a large health pack and shotgun shells, yay! It's basically the third shotgun ammunition pack in this area, which is awesome, because we have 15 shots. And it's pretty much the same amount as we started with. And that's pretty sweet. And yeah, as I emphasized before, shotgun is very useful right now, but it's not going to be that great later on, which is why I want to maximize its um, potential, really. Now watch out for this. These will actually hurt Lara much closer than they should. Something about the step, I'm not really sure what it is, so be extra careful. And what I do is I make a jump forward. Like that. Now, yeah, that was basically the passage to our right. Now, for the left one. Uh, this is gonna be a bit trickier and I'm gonna save the game here because of this pendulum over here oh dear first of all let's collect yay another shotgun ammunition pack it's just sweet I think there are six of them in the whole level which is pretty cool now when Lara picks stuff up she bows her head down so she's not in real danger from the pendulum however we should be jumping back right now Hard to see it like this. Okay, sweet. Now, this is a really difficult jump, so I'm gonna save before this goes any further. Okay. Now, the thing is, you could try and go forward and then hop backwards to make the full running jump. However, you'd lose quite a lot of health and you'd probably use health packs to compensate for that. Because, well, this pendulum won't kill Lara instantly, it will still drain a large amount of her health. Probably cut off her nose too, and we don't want that. So, uh, using side steps, just go slightly backwards behind the first square and make a running jump. It's not going to be a perfect running jump, but if you'll press control to grab the ledge late enough, thus allowing Lara to make a bit higher jump, she should still make it. So let's do this. Okay, just made it. So yeah, it's more difficult. You can't do a full running jump without losing health over there. And you might recognize this looking down, uh, that's the area with the first secret where we kill the pro poor crocodile. 
And yes, basically, um, we're gonna flood it with war by flicking on a switch. No, shimming is one of my least favorite activities in Tomb Raiders. It's about as exciting as moving block, which means it's not exciting at all. Now, I don't understand why there's not the, you know, the typical water sound effect whilst we change the water level, but whatever. Anyway, this means we can safely drop. As you can see, the secret is now permanently shut. There's nothing more we need it for. And let's just swim to the ledge over there. Now, once you climb up, you might be surprised there's a rat standing over there, minding its own business. It's actually not even moving, which also means Lara's not shooting at it. Uh, this is pretty much the similar case to the bat in uh, Colosseum, one of the three in the tower, in corner tower, which was just asleep on top of the ceiling and just wouldn't budge. Thankfully, this particular rat does budge indeed once you step closer, but it still gets the surprise attack on you, so that's kind of annoying. No, I never understood why the walls are green. Is that mold or some sort of lichen growing there? I was never actually clear on that. Oh, careful now. As soon as you get up, there's a lion. The only lion of this level, and I think the last lion in the game. Were, yeah, lying in wait. Thankfully, shotgun was pretty handy in this particular situation. Now, this is where the lion came from, so it's sort of a lion's den. We're gonna flick a switch, which opens door somewhere. Now, the door is right above us. And, yeah. So, the spikes there just look to be there for no apparent reason. However, later on, you'll understand. Now, there are two gorillas here on a very uh, small platform. Make sure they will not bump you off into the spikes down there because that would be just an instant death. Instead what I want to do is jump into a corner and use a shotgun. Just like that, we didn't even get hit, that's pretty cool. Now mind you, we won't actually make the jump over there to the ledge over there so we're gonna have to shimmy from this little crack in the wall. And there's a large health pack, and yay, a golden key. However, you think, oh, golden key, maybe it opens the tomb. And no, it actually does something really rather unremarkable. Now, dropping down safely, I just do a diagonal jump like this. And just hold control, and Lara will slide forward on the step so we don't have to climb it. Kind of a shortcut. Now, the use of the golden key is to raise these floating block platforms. Oh, they're, they're not floating really. Or are they? I'm not actually clear on that. They're just raised. Oh yeah, you get a secret chime for some reason. Hey, yes, they are floating. You get a secret chime, but that doesn't really count as a secret, thankfully, because that'd be um, confusing. I messed that one up. Basically, the distance of these particular blocks is very annoying because you... Um, to be on the safe side, you... You should basically just prepare for the full running jump on each and every one of them, but I tend to save the time by just doing two running jumps without pausing. Okay, <clears throat> now... Oh, this is actually my very favorite room. Um, There are plenty of doors here. Now, the one of particular interest is going to be this one. However, there are two rusty keyholes, which means, yes, we're going to get rusty keys. And there's one with a block and one... Well, four odd-looking tiles. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the block on each of the tiles to open each of the door. Before exploring what's behind the door, we're just gonna put the block on each of them in a certain pattern so as not to waste more time than necessary. However, once you open the door, some beasts might come out, which is a point at which I'll just hop back and uh, jump on top of it. It's actually quicker than... Um, then manually climbing it. Oh look, a gorilla! That's just so very cute. And dead. Oh well. Now, 
our final destination of this block is going to be the square over here, just so we can also use the block to access the door over there. That's pretty much the whole deal. And once we'll open all the door, we're going to explore all of them. I can never actually make out what's in those inscriptions. It just doesn't make much sense. It doesn't even look leaded. It's just random. By the way, um, when I was complaining that this level is basically just an extension of the system, I think the developers themselves realized this uh, much later on whilst making Anniversary Remake, because they basically... There is no system level in the game, there's just Tomb of Tihokan level, which is the whole system area we're familiar with. It's just being called Tomb of Tihokan, and after you pass the system area, the next adjacent area, still of the same level, is basically the actual two. There are none of these parts where you have to move this block or just get through the uh, endless, pointless plumbing. It's really unexciting. And wait, there should be a gorilla here. Yay! Okay, now... Exploring all the rooms will yield quite a few pickups, really, and yes, more shotgun shells. It's like, in this level you just can't run out of shotgun ammunition, they make sure of that. Oh, don't even get me started on magnums. I mean, officially, well, outside of secrets, we're still not supposed to have them, but we already have so much am ammunition, even though we use them a lot. Now, careful about this one. Yes. That's a boulder, and not one, but two of them crossing their paths. So, if you'll be lured in to pick up the small health pack first, you're basically gonna die. So make sure you prioritize a little. <clears throat> okay, and this is where the rats came from. Only a small health pack over here. Now, what this basically means, we picked up a silver key from over there, and we're gonna pick up another one from over there, so if you don't care about the pickups, you only need to move block, the block on the two tiles to open the two doors. Yay, we haven't seen these in a while, but no annoying steps to get in the way, so it should be pretty easy. Okay, that's two rusty keys. That's very sweet. Now, I'm gonna save in a moment, because there's gonna be another secret here, and if we mess that one up, we'll never get it again. Okay. You know, the fact that whenever we access menus of any kind and Lara is being shown in the past, kind of ceased to creep me out. I just kind of got used to it. Because I know it's perhaps behind it. Okay, so now I'm gonna save the game. Okay, I saved the game, so um, let me just take a step forward. Now, this particular area is just a long slope down. However, there's a secret on Lara's left that we're gonna have to jump into without being actually able to see it. Which is tricky, because there's gonna be an awkward camera angle with which we're not gonna be able to see anything. Notice the creepy leather texture on Lara's right. Not sure what that's doing there. Okay, let's do this. Okay, sweet. Now this is the corridor with the secret all the way over there. Now this isn't over. We're gonna have to make it through a series of loose tiles without a mistake. If we make one mistake, we can say goodbye to the secret. Forever. Thankfully, Lara doesn't make any mistakes. Is that right, Lara? Of course it is, that's what you'd say. Okay, and Uzi Clips. Actually, these are pretty rare so far. <laughs> yeah, we got... No, we've actually got five of these throughout the whole game. They're gonna be more frequent once we'll actually encounter the weapon itself, but until then, not really. Okay, and uh, yeah, let's just keep sliding back. Uh, I mean, forward. Yay, we made a swan dive through the ugly mouthpiece. And 
talking about ugly mouth. That was so close. Okay, let's shoot the crocodile. And he's stuck for some reason. God damn it, why is everyone getting stuck in this game? Now, is this gonna take ages, or is this gonna take ages? Oh, he's dead, thankfully. Okay, now, let's explore this cavern over here. Uh, we're nearing the level exit area of the actual tomb, and the area surrounding it is actually incredibly and insanely confusing. However, there really isn't anything to be discovered there outside of mechanisms that we need to activate in order to unlock the main door. Um, you'll soon see what I'm talking about. Okay, okay. Now you must be wondering, where the hell is that? Yeah, that's not really much of a clue, is it? Thankfully, I did my trial run, so I should remember the path. Okay. Yeah, this area is basically unnecessarily huge. Okay. And there's a hidden tunnel over here. Which is actually where... Ah, you can see the tiles? Awesome, this is where we open the rusty door in. First time I encountered this, I thought it was actually a secret, but... Nah. Now that's Tomb of Tihokan, finally! This level should have been just called More Sewers or something. Or just Rats and an explanation mark, that's what it's supposed to be called. And yeah, basically the tomb is on this underground lake. So let's climb up. And let's enter! Oh wait, new enemy type! Oh yeah. Now this is a centaur statue that's shooting fireballs out of its bone and muscular body. Yeah, these guys don't really have any skin other than the stone they were made of, which is really creepy. Now, you might have noticed there's other centaur statue here. However, one of these guys prevents you from entering and the other from leaving. Now, what I mean by leaving is leaving with another piece of the skion, but we don't have that yet. <laughs> A little late for the prize giving, no? Still, it is oh the taking part which counts. I'm sorry, but this must have been the worst French accent I've ever heard. Whoever voiced him is can't speak French. Oh god damn it, Pierre. That was so terrible. Just like your performance in combat. God damn it. At any rate, Pierre de Pont is finally down, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, gentlemen. I can't stress enough what an important milestone this is for me. I hate that bastard. And look, three pickups. We got magnums. Which we, um. Yeah, already have, but what we also got is a golden key, well, sorry, gold key, and another piece of the skion, yay, which was apparently probably on this pedestal over here. Now, um, yeah, basically we're gonna use the golden key to open the door over there, and the actual lock mechanism is up over there. Now, in order to get all the way up, let's first explore these side ledges, there should be a Magnum ammunition pickup on each. Oh yeah, I can see it on the left. Awesome. And Lara just loves showing off in front of a corpse of her rival. Oh yeah. Imagine these two as college kids, constantly bullying and teasing each other. If they just knew that one day they'll be shooting at each other. Oh boy. Yeah, I don't think they did much pillow fights with each other as well. Okay, um... And the last, the very last pickup should be over here, and a large health pack. Actually, come to think of it, we did pretty well so far. This is all the health we lost. 
didn't use a single health pack yet. I mean, in this level, I think we've used two small health packs overall, which kind of depresses me, but oh well. Yay, the level exit opened, the actual tomb of Tihokan with his sarcophagus. But, okay, let's not get carried away, there is still one enemy to take care of, and yes, this is what I meant by leaving. We have a Skion in our inventory, and this guy is not keen on letting us get away with it. Ouch, got hit. Awkward. Mario, are you even... Mario, are you even hitting him? Okay, because for a while I thought we were just missing all the shots. Sometimes happens. Okay, now, both Guardians are taken care of creepy creatures, and we're gonna find out soon enough who's actually behind them. <laughs> now, there's gonna be an interesting cutscene over here, which obviously means that my game is gonna crash whilst I'm recording. So, yeah, I'm gonna stop recording over here. Don't worry, I'll include the cutscene in the final video, and I'm gonna see you guys on the statistics screen. Here lies Tehokan, one of the two just rulers of Atlantis, who even after the curse of the continent had tried to keep rule here in these barren other lands. He died without child and his knowledge has no heritage. Look over us kindly, Tehokan. Okay, that was actually a bit depressing, died childless and his knowledge died with him. Well, I wouldn't say that. Think of Skion as a knowledge disc, really. At any rate, we'll see what happens when uh, two pieces of Skion are combined in the next video. And as it turned out, we got all the kills, all the pickups and all the secrets. Yay! Okay, so I'm glad you... Stick with me so far and I'll see you guys next time in Egypt.